It's another episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. The Arizona Coyotes' new arena actually has a name. Plus, their former arena has a new name. We're going to talk about both of those things, figure out, yeah, just have a discussion about it on today's episode of Locked On Coyotes. Your Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Robin Leonio. That's Carl Pavlock right beside me on today's episode of Locked on Coyotes. I want to thank everyone for making this show your first listen every day. We are free and available everywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube, on the Odyssey app, and on the 12 News app for those people who like to tune in you know, via your local news. Um, so all that fun jazz on that side. But we got a great show for you on today's episode, brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has all the all the props, odds, and lines that you all need and never before. Bet Online, where the game starts. We got a great show for you guys today. We're talking about arena naming rights because two arenas here in Arizona have new names: the new arena, the ASU Multipurpose Arena, that the Arizona Coyotes will be playing in, has been renamed to the Mullet Arena, and the Arizona Coyotes former arena, now formerly known as Gila River Arena, has been officially renamed to Desert Diamond Arena, which is an interesting one. Carl, you had some thoughts about that because that was an interesting decision. Yeah, definitely. Like, as Will Shakespeare said, uh, what's in a name? Uh, a miserable pile of secrets. I may have that wrong. Um, but yes, we have two arena names on the same day. Uh, it was quite a sight to see. Uh, seemed like Glendale was going to steal the show with their new arena, uh, Desert Diamond Arena, um, named after the casino uh, by the uh, Tana Atha. Uh, may mispronounce that correct? Tana Atham Tribes Casino. Awesome. Yep. A casino that, if you follow your Glendale politics closely, like so, if you're me, a weirdo who cares about local politics for a city, two cities or one city over, because that's where the hockey team is. Like you would know that Glendale has fought against that casino for a long time, and now with the Coyotes gone, with the Gila River uh, Resort and Casino like leaving, they uh, they kind of find an old friend and. Like everyone who's down on their luck, they went with a casino. Uh, it was absolutely funny to see that. What's interesting <laughs> is, you know, I think what Desert Diamond is new to the West Valley. Um, Desert Diamond is really well known for their Tucson-based operations. Um, which is how I know about this art, that, that, that casino. I'm like, yeah, I was like, the Dahona Autumn Nation? That, like, what? like, why are they in Glendale? Oh, that's right. They opened up a casino up there, too. Um an interesting decision nonetheless yeah th they're new because the city council fought tooth and nail to not have them be there uh and then they turned into the saviors which is you know a thing that happens it's kind of fun to watch uh the person who you think is going to not do too much actually comes in at the final moment and saves you uh you know I wish the city of Glendale all the best. I wish the casino as well as they should get. Uh, I don't want to give too much support to a casino one way or the other. Uh, I wish the the nation uh, all the all the you know kind of prestige that comes with having the naming rights for a eighteen c arena. Um, yeah, it, it, it should be an interesting move. I am very curious to see kind of what happens with this. Um, I don't know. For people who are following me on Five for Howling, I will occasionally post uh, some Gila River Arena news 
uh, snippets just because I'm very petty and I like to keep track of the drama from the, you know, the old flame. I spent so much of my time dealing with the city of Glendale. I've never even lived in the city of Glendale. Um, I lived on the border once, but never in Glendale proper. But I keep having to deal with their news, and this was kind of one of those things. Um, and it's definitely going to be a bit of a different thing. Uh, I'm still probably going to call it Hero River Arena. Uh, I think other of us will. Yeah, you can still hear me. Um, for those of you guys who are watching on YouTube, I'm facing some technical difficulties with my camera. Um, it's acting funky, so you at least you can still hear me. Um, but I am I am off camera, uh, which is fine. You can. Um, but anyways, yeah, you're right. It is like a lot. I mean, a lot of people get attached to old, to names that you've been used to, right? Um, obviously. You know, you were talking about Gila River Arena for a while before being jobbing.com arena, but then, but most people knew it as Gila River Arena. So, are people really going to refer to it as Desert Diamond Arena? Uh, probably not. <laughs> no, no, I, I still know people who call it Bank One Ballpark. Uh, like, you can kind of tell, like, when someone moved to the valley and or became like aware of sports by what they call arenas. Uh, it took me the longest time to, to not call it jobbing.com arena. Um, I like Taylor River Arena though. Um, and I will give them credit. They didn't call it uh, Desert Diamond Casino Arena like um, whatever Footprint's name used to be. Uh, can you... Talking Stick Resort Arena, right? Yeah, yeah. Like throwing that resort in there, that that sounds bad. Throwing casino in there, that's bad. But you know, Desert Diamond Arena, it, it's it it sounds like a place where you'd go watch rodeos. Yeah, I mean, it, does, it, it seems like that a little bit, doesn't it? Um, but it's interesting though, um, because you talked about how you know it. Uh, this happened the same day as ASU announcing their arena, um, their new arena name. We're actually going to get to that in just a moment. But, but first, I'm going to turn to Carl for a quick word. So, yep, I have a message, fittingly enough, from our friends at betonline.net. It is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. We're talking about casino, but this is all online, so you can just use your phone and find reviews and news from every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Who knows? There may even be some rodeo betting in there. I don't know what the future is going to hold, but that's the place to go because Bet Online continues to be your top online resource for all your sports wedging information from live in game betting, scores, and podcasts. They have you covered. You can head over to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, so now let's get to even more um, of this conversation. Uh, as we talk about new arena names for the Arizona Coyotes for or just around here in town. And, well, let's put it this way. The, as my camera comes back on, I think, um, the Arizona Coyotes are in a fun situation that uh, their new arena in the ASU Multipurpose Arena has been renamed the um, Mullet Arena, thanks to a donor, the, you know, the donors who kind of really helped bring that arena, you know, into fruition for the ASU team. But, Carl, this name is a freaking awesome name. It is. Uh, I will say, just for listeners or even watchers at home it's mullet m-u-l-l-e-t-t -T. 
so not the traditional smiling of, of the hairstyle. Uh, it's named after uh, Donald, uh, a.k.a. Don's, apparently, and Barbara Mullet, um, who have been committed to ASU and Sun Devil, Sun Devil Athletics for many years. Uh, I think every press release I've seen talks about them being involved with the program from the very beginning. Uh, I don't particularly know them, but, you know, it's not necessarily – like a thing you find out, like who are the major philanthropic donors for a team, especially a college team. I like it. I, I like the fact that it's named after people, like people who are involved and not like a, a, a like a corporation. Like that's, that's kind of fun. Like, especially like when you look at what the coyotes previous arenas were in, like Keeler River Arena, it's it's fine. You can make the argument that it's named after the tribe and not the casino slash resort. Uh, Jobbing.com Arena, it's gross, uh, just because yeah, internet bubble. Um, but you know, named after a family, that's cool. That's great for a college arena, which is what it's going to be. Like it's going to be three to four years with the Coyotes there. But beyond that, it's going to be, you know, where my alma mater plays. I was, I was still going to think of whether or not they were going to have a better name, like a better name other than mainly because they're back ball arena on just a desert financial arena and before that it was wells fargo arena yep and i remember when i first went to college i got a credit card uh from wells fargo outside of wells fargo arena so like i, I think they definitely could have gone with a sponsor especially for an arena that like in the first three years at least is going to be like a major like hub, you know, NHL cameras are going to be there. They're going to be like massive coverage. We may even get some like fancy stuff, like I don't know, practices, like any kind of like national coverage. Like that seems like something where you could like throw a corporation on there and they'll be happy, but but no, they decide to go with like a a family, like donors, like people who are actually making this happen with their money, and, and I I do think that's kind of sweet. Absolutely right, and I think that's the fun. I mean, that's the fun bit of college. Um, a lot of it, a lot of it is, and you and that's what you said, right? Um, and it's cool to see that, um, especially because you know it's like, hey, you know. These people were a uh, um, major part in, in this arena becoming a thing. Yeah. So why not give them the right, give them the proper credit? I mean, one of the things that we talked about on the episode a couple weeks back with Justin Emerson was um, the Pagula family had made a major donation to get what was it university of pittsburgh or like a pennsylvania um, college program to make the jump from acha to the ncaa with a brand new arena um and they got tons of credit for it uh, the Pagulas are, are someone I know just because, hey, I'm from Western New York, and they are very involved with the Bills. Um, and we're kind of getting a similar thing now, just in a different order, where I, I'm sure the Mullet family gave a lot of money to get the ASU program up and running, um, and now they're getting awarded with an arena name. Um, I'm not sure if that was included in their donation, who knows? Uh, rich people who donated enough money to get arenas named after them can sometimes have weird stipulations. So, but you know, it, it's cool to see. Um, yeah, and it's nice to know like where the Coyotes are going to be playing for the next couple of years. Like, we don't need to call it the uh, what was what was the official name before 
because it was something like weird other than just like the asu ice arena it was like the logic something or other do you know what i'm talking about so no it was like the logic quarter or something so and so like just kind of like a description of like oh here it is the novus innovation corridor is where the mullet arena is going to be so Mold Arena definitely sounds better than Novus Innovation Corridor. Yeah, it definitely does sound better than that. <laughs> um, I think still the coolest thing is like yes, it's spelled differently. It's still you know based off the sound, very much like the hairstyle, of the mm -hmm. mullet, um, which is a very very hockey hairstyle. Yep. Uh, I know plenty of hockey players had mullets. Uh, one of the people who brought me to hockey, the director, Kevin Smith, uh, talked about in one of his things, I can't even remember, having a mullet uh, as his character, Silent Bob. Um, and he called it hockey hair because it definitely is. Because, you know, if you're a dude in the 70s and 80s, you wanted to have some long hair because that's what was cool. But you had to wear a helmet, so cut it short, so you don't get hair in your face. And that's the mullet, baby. Absolutely, um, it's it's really cool. Um, obviously, you know, in terms of hockey, you know, nothing, no, no one will sport it, have sported it better than Yarmir Yager. But mm. um, <laughs> yeah, his mullet was beautiful, absolutely oh. beautiful. Uh, I I kind of like Smitty's because uh, he had like. Didn't he like for a while have like the mohawk top with like the mullet back? Yeah, I think yeah there was that too. I also thought what was really, really cool was um and I hate to try to bring any Blackhawks credit, but I think it was was it was it Marion Hosa? I think who couldn't grow a beard, so. He decided to go play off mullet instead. If I'm, if I'm wrong about it being Marion Host, maybe it's like another bigger player name. Um, but a a Chicago Blackhawks player could not grow a playoff beard, so he decided to grow a playoff mullet instead. I I do not remember that story. Uh, if it is Marion Hosa, that is like the only person I'm happy with that being. Uh, just because like all of the other Chicago Blackhawks players, I'm like, eh, I could take or leave you. Except for eh, Yarmulson was fine. Yeah, true. Um, I'm trying to f um, figure out right now um, if that was the if who did that. Um. Because that would have been fun. Oh no, it was uh, it was Patrick Kane. Yeah, uh, you just you just had to make it bad. Lost his luster. It's lost his luster. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, we'll shut it down. Uh, we're gonna name the arena something different. Uh, we're just gonna. <laughs> But no, it's a different it's a different letter. We don't have to worry about Patrick Kane's existence. But there's one thing I really want to see, and I'm gonna talk about that what I really want to see in just a little bit. But I do have to uh, share a PSA from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You might be hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes too many and as the evening comes to an end, people start to head out. You think of calling for a Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home, okay? It's no big deal. What are the odds you get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that can happen? Your insurance goes up? You lose your license? You lose your job? You total your car? You kill someone? Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are, are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel under the influence. That's why police officers are out there now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, 
think again. Play safe and plan ahead to get it right. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. But back to the conversation and Carl. One thing I really want to see just for the heck of it is one of the Arizona Coyotes players goes a mullet just for the heck of it. Ah, oh, that would be awesome. Who do you think does it? Mm. Ah, I gotta see who can pull it off best. Um, because a lot of there's a lot of Coyotes players with good flows. Um, that they can definitely do it. Um, you know who stands out to me right away, and I I I kind of don't want him to do it just because just such amazing hair. Liam O'Brien would have a phenomenal mullet. Like, my God, the man had, just has beautiful hair. Uh, and it's very long. He just needs to cut that top and just power mullet. And, you know, definitely some other players. Like, I could see Krauss rocking a mullet. I could see Fisher. But, honestly, I don't want a young guy. I want a guy born in the 90s. And, to me, the ultimate 90s kid is the what it only. Uh, sure, let's go with Patrick Nemeth. He could grow a mullet. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Born in 92, uh, just four years younger than me. Uh, he's Swedish. Gotta love the Swedish more. Yeah, why not? I mean, I think that, that, that sounds like it works, right? Sort of. Yeah. Actually, no. Wait. I'm wrong. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get two molds going from Tom's River, New Jersey, and Pembroke Pines, Florida, Cam Deneen and Shane Goss to spare. Because when you think mullets, you think New Jersey and Florida. But what about you, Robin? Who do you think can make the best mullet for the Coyotes? Ooh, I don't know. Um... That is a big question because I'm trying to think in my mind. I'm already trying to imagine. Um, I'm trying to think someone from the leadership team. But I think at the same time, like, do I want to see, like, do we want to see Clayton Keller in a mullet? Do we want to see Lawson Cross in a mullet? I don't know. Would it look funny? Yeah. Will it, yeah. it, will it work? I, I mean, they have good hair. <laughs> the, the, uh, I, I never really think about Krauss or Keller's hair. I'm not going to lie. I, I, don't, I don't think they have the best flow. I mean, maybe not the best team right now, but they still have good hair. Um, and yeah, let me refresh that. Uh, I never think about Keller. Krause is 6'4". Uh, I don't want me to insult his hair. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we're definitely going to need to bring in, you know, like Connor Geeky and Maverick Lamaru just so they can grow a mullet because their hairs are beautiful. See, that's the thing though. They're like, they're young. Like th that's, that's one of those. <laughs> no, I want like the old guy to have the mullet. Like I want freaking Bukestad in his 1992 you know July 17th birthday. Rebuilding coyotes. The coyotes are going to bring back. Um, Yammer younger just for this purpose. Just to, 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 maybe he doesn't have to play a full game, full season or anything. You know, he's you know, like however old he is, just just bring him back just for the novelty. All right, you assume that Yager could not make like be a top line winner on the Coyotes next season. He absolutely could be. Like, 
throw him in there for like right next to Clayton Keller. I'm sure he'll still score like 20 goals. So you're saying don't look past it. Yeah, yeah. Don't look past it. No, uh, strong. Yager is waiting for your crown. Yeah, he he is definitely waiting. Uh, like, uh, do I want to play on a team I own, or do I want to play in uh, uh, at an ASU arena? Uh, I I recently watched the Netflix Woodstock '99 documentary, and it was just a glory of people born in the '80s being horrible, and that's. That to me is the true mullet. So I need someone old to rock it. I don't need no Clinton Kellers. Uh, I don't need uh, a freaking. Oh, perfect person. Andrew Ladd. Laddie, bring back a mullet. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Andrew, Andrew Ladd, born in 1985 in Maple Ridge, BC, Canada. That boy needs to bring a mullet. You know not be funny if the entire team tried to? <laughs> it would be funny if they just wore mullet wigs for the first game. Shoot, dude. <laughs> What are we doing? We need to sign up for the freaking marketing team for the Coyotes. <laughs> yes. Coyotes marketing team. Uh, we will plan all of your events. Uh, just send us money uh, or uh, free uh, free sponsors. Uh, just, yeah. Whoever is going to be providing the food for the arena, just send that. Yeah, that's all I need. <laughs> yeah. uh, that is going to be a fun thing to look out for because you know the arena is coming along we're getting the naming rights like i do wonder if they go like the gila river arena route and like sell like name brand food or or what because like tempe has some great cuisine i'm sure there's plenty of restaurants like freaking get four peaks in there four peaks has some amazing chicken strips like Along with their beer, like you could get something good going. Absolutely, I'm pretty sure we can figure something out. Um, but, but yeah, but a little what name? Uh, what an opportunity for Coyotes players to grow a mullet or wear a mullet just for you know for the wig for the for the novelty, um, you know. And I know it's ASU's arena, but still, you know, take advantage. Take advantage. Yeah. I mean, very few times in your life in the year 2022 can you justify having a mullet. Uh, and if you're a Coyotes player, that time is now. It is absolutely time now. Anyways, though, we're just about out of time on this episode of Luck on Coyotes. Carl, do you have any last thoughts before we close things off? I'm just going to go with a devil horns rock on uh, for the mullet. Love to hear it. Love, love to hear it. Anyways, though, like I said, that's out of time of this episode of Locked On. If you'd like to leave a review, like, comment, subscribe if you have yet to. Already. We're available everywhere to get your podcast, including on YouTube. To get to interact with us on social media, we're on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Locked On Coyotes, on Instagram at Locked On Coyotes, and on Twitter at L O underscore Coyotes. I am personally at Robin underscore Leano. It's Robin with the Y underscore L E A N. Carl Pavlock is at Carl Pavlock FFH. If you interact with us after you might have, we might answer right back or on a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. I hope you're staying safe out there. I hope you're staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.